Hi, welcome to Kitty Witty Papercraft. I'm Amy, and in this video, I'm going to show you this journal I made using a Better Homes and Gardens binder. This is really the easiest kind of junk journal to make. So you've already got a binder mechanism right inside. So all you have to do is take out the original pages and add your own pages. So you don't have to create a new spine. You don't even have to just, um, you know, if you wanted to make like a ring bound journal, you would have to cut covers off of a book and then punch the uh, cover and then add your pages to it. You don't have to do any of that. You just have to add your own pages to it. So super, super simple. And then you can just decorate it however you want. I kept this actually really simple. It looks kind of decorated because I added a lot of floofy little things around, but I did not really do a whole lot to this. It really did not take me any time at all. So the first thing I did was I took out the original pages. So you can just take these out and use them in another project. You could take some of these pages out and add them to your inside pages of your new binder. And you know, if you want to make it look really junk journal like so this one, I did not add a whole lot of vintage book pages or ephemera to it to make it look like a junk journal. This is really just a place for me to take notes when I'm reading. So I read a lot of like personal development books, spiritual development books, and I have a section here for taking notes on them. And it's just plain loose leaf paper that I've cut down. And I'll share a tip about that in just a minute. And then I made myself another section for journaling. So after I read, it's just a place to take notes on what I've read. And it's not something that I want to decorate. I just want a place where I can just kind of free, freely write my thoughts out. So I just wanted really plain paper. Um, I've got some plain printer paper back here. And like I said, I've also got some loose leaf paper in here. And that's it. And I have two dividers. And I like making my dividers with double-sided paper. So all the paper that I used in this project is from Maggie Holmes Flourish collection. And I wanted something to go with the cover on the inside. And that collection has lots of florals and fruits in it. So I thought that paper would look nice. So I chose two papers for the dividers and then a paper for covering the inside front and back covers. And that's all I really did. I decorated this divider a little bit with some washi tape and some die cuts. And then I did add uh, one piece of vintage ephemera on top just because this, I thought the flowers in this card were so pretty and went with the colors in here. And it's really beautiful inside too. I just attached a little piece of scrapbook paper to the back of the card. I didn't want to hole punch the card. And then I just punched that scrapbook piece. And that just adds a little something extra to this first divider. And then I added a empty seed packet. It's a little pocket I could add some little secret journaling to. And I did add a page from the original binder. And then I just have my papers here. And then this I added a little piece of vintage ephemera. And it's just something that held those foldable note uh, postcards. And it's got this nice little built in pocket. So I have some extra pieces of ephemera in there if I want to do some writing and keep it inside of this. And then that's it. On this tab, let me take that pen out. I added a chenille little kind of tab here to hold a pen. So I did a video on my Instagram showing how I did this. And it's super simple. You just take a piece of fabric and you might want to use something a little sturdier than just plain cotton. This is chenille. You might want to use um, like a quilted material or bark cloth or feed sack cotton something a little sturdier and then you just wrap it around the front and the back of the page and I attached it with double-sided tape like strong double-sided tape but then I went back and also stapled it just because if you're putting a pen in it um, and taking it in and out and this pen is kind of heavy you want some extra security so I used just some staples there and it just makes a really nice pen holder and then I always have a pen with my journal and don't have to go searching for one when I'm ready to write and then I just added some little pom-pom trim for fun there. And then there's another page from that binder. And that is all I did. Um, and then I added some little fun things I'll show with you, share with you in just a second. So the, the last thing I did was 
covered the inside front and back covers. I also have a video on my Instagram and I just did them on Instagram because they were really quick little things to do. Um, so, you know, they really didn't require like a whole tutorial, but you know, when you get oops, a binder and I'll show some binders that I have as an example of what you can look for if you wanna to try to do this yourself too. They're kind of plain on the inside. Sometimes they're you know messed up on the inside. So you can cover it with scrapbook paper. And I just used double-sided tape. So I have this one inch wide double-sided tape. And I just put you know a few strips around the edges and a little bit in the middle. And then I added scrapbook paper that I measured ahead of time and stuck that down on the front cover and then also on the back and then I added some pockets so that's just another option you can do I used chenille you can use any kind of paper or fabric and what I did was I cut a piece of cardstock to the size of the pocket that I wanted and then I actually adhered the chenille to the piece of cardstock so I again used this wide double-sided tape. I just put strips of it on here and then I adhered the chenille to that. And then I added the pocket with double-sided tape. I just used the quarter inch wide tape to adhere the pocket. I keep checking my camera because my battery's getting ready to run out. Um, so I attached the pocket that way. And what else did I wanna say about that? You could just attach the chenille itself, but it gives it a little more sturdiness to attach it to the cardstock first. And it also let me make the pocket like really snug. So there's not a lot of space here. If this was fabric, it would be a lot looser. And when you do that, then everything slides around in the pockets and that kind of makes me crazy. So I like to make my pockets tighter so the things don't slide all around. So I did the same thing front and back and then just added a little bit of um, baby pom-pom trim to finish it off and then I just added some little fun things at the top so this flourish paper collection has a sheet of paper that has butterflies and dragonflies on it and I just cut them out and I just mounted them to another piece of like scrapbook paper that I knew I wasn't going to use and then I cut the image out again so then it's extra sturdy and then I used E6000 glue to glue the paper clip on, but um, I just added some washi on top, uh, washi tape on top just for a little extra insurance because I wasn't being patient and waiting for that to completely dry. So <laughs> I added some tape on there and then it just slides over the page and you can use them as bookmarks or just little page topper decorative things. And then back here I have a little embellishment that I made a long time ago that I just liked because it had the same colors as the papers in this journal. So I just attached that with a little dragonfly paper clip that I just happened to have. And then I have a bookmark in here with some fabric that sticks out of the top. And this bookmark was just an old uh, vintage button card that I attached to scrapbook paper that coordinates with this journal and this fabric here behind it also is the fabric that I added here. So this isn't something that I'm going to put on a shelf. If I was going to stand this on a shelf, I might not want to cover the spine. Let me zoom out a little bit, but because it has really pretty artwork on the spine, but this is going to lay flat on my bedside table. Um, I have a vintage desk next to my bed not a nightstand so I have a lot of room and I can sit this right on there like this so I just added this for fun I just thought the fabric looked pretty with that and I just took a long strip of fabric and just ran it underneath the binder rings and then just tied it in a bow on the side and then this feels like a completely new journal completely different than it was originally the one little tip I did want to share was about the paper so the way binders work, when you put paper in and you open it like this, you have all this extra space here. You don't want to measure your papers with the binder open because when you close the binder, the papers get pushed to the edge. So what you should do is take a piece of loose leaf paper or whatever paper you're going to use in your binder as at full size and hole punch it, put it in, and then pull your papers so they're all the way to the edge 
and then just kind of mark it so that the edge of the paper when you trim it is going to be inside of your cover. So I just did that with one and then that helped me find the size that I need. And then of course I had to cut the bottom also. And then I had a hole punch. So whether you're using plain paper or loose leaf paper, you're gonna to have to punch the holes to fit the binder. But once you do that, it's, it's not too bad and it didn't take me too long. And now I have this journal all ready to go. So I'm really excited about using this. I feel really motivated to actually take the notes on some of these books that I'm reading and some of them are kind of heavy and I want to be able to remember like the really important parts and then go back and reflect on them and journal. So this is going to help me do that. And I just wanted to show you a few different binders. I'm hoping I can squeeze this in before my battery runs out. So I'm talking kind of fast. So Better Homes and Gardens made a bunch of binder style books. So the one I use is called New Garden Book, but they also made one just called Garden Book. So different years, they had different various little variations on the titles and then the artwork is different on them. But um, yeah, they're all made the exact same way, same number of holes in them. So there's Better Homes and Gardens Garden Book. Better Homes and Gardens sewing book. This is another fun one with some really neat um, pictures inside of it. And this already has some really cool artwork on the inside. So you may not even want to cover that. You might just want to add a pocket or just leave it as is. But that makes another great journal. Um, Better Homes and Gardens decorating book is another really fun one. All kinds of neat mid-century modern pictures inside. And Better Homes and Gardens handyman's book. They also made um, a cookbook, Better Homes and Gardens cookbook, and that one has like a red plaid cover. I don't have one of those. And Betty Crocker also made some binder style cookbooks. They have the new picture cookbook and one that's just called Betty Crocker's cookbook. And they all come with different covers. Uh, this is my favorite one. And you know, sometimes they have a lot of damage on them because they were cookbooks. So that's something you might really want to cover up, but this would make a really great recipe journal, but you can use any of these covers for any kind of journal. So if you're brand new to junk journals, this is a really great place to start because all you have to do is focus on the inside pages and just kind of getting used to putting them together in you know a way that looks pleasing, you know, matching papers and all of that kind of stuff. So all you have to do is hole punch them. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. So if you have any questions, please let me answer them, of course. And as always, thank you so much for being here and taking the time to watch one of my videos. I appreciate you so much. And I will catch you guys really soon. Take care.